Don't laugh. Brown season <laughs> might happen. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I'd like to call the Budget Review Committee to order. It's September 19th, 2024. We're in the Aldermanic Chamber and it's 7 p.m. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Senate. Here. Alderman Derek Tierbo. Alderman John Sullivan. Here. All the women at large, Shoshana Kelly. Alderman at large, Laurie Wilkshire. I'm here. Alderman at large, Michael O'Brien is present. And our chairman, Richard A. Dowd. Present. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. Declare a quorum. We have a quorum. Also in attendance, we have Karen Smith, uh, NPD business manager, John Griffin, CFO, treasurer, tax collector, and Don Enright, CFO, uh, treasurer, tax collector. And Mr. Tim Cummings is also with us. Uh, and that should do it, sir. All right. First item on the agenda is public comment. You have uh, three minutes on anything that's on tonight's agenda being acted upon. Please go up, give your name and address for the record. My name is Laura Cahoon. I live at 30 Greenwood Drive. I'm here tonight to ask you to vote no for R24089. First, this action has never been done before. And during these difficult times, residents cannot afford to let you raise the budget any more than it already has been raised. The national budget was $412 million for 2024, and now it's up to $459 million for 2025. These figures do not include any supplemental figures that have already been increased for the 2025. This increase is 11.35%. I realize this board may not understand that these figures, but they are all on the website to verify. Uh, they will not align with the mayor's figures because he likes to drop figures so that they do not look so bad, so then he can blame the state for giving the residents a large increase in property taxes. One must remember that the state must calculate the rate on the figures that the city gives them. If a resident looks at just the bonding within the city, they will see that in 2017, the total bonds were $474 million, and we're now at $633 million. That's an increase of $159 million. To bring it down so that everybody can understand, ta Nashua taxpayers have increased their bonding by 33.53% 30 since 2017. I called the uh, uh, DRA yesterday, and a man confirmed that the city has $633 million in outstanding bond. His next statement was, that's a lot of outstanding bond for a town. The city, if the city just added the outstanding principal on the bond of $456 million, and the current budget, which is also $456 million, that's a total of $912 million. The size of Nashua, there should be no reason why the debt is this high. Corpus Christi last week came out and said their food demand is up 30% and their rest, rent assistant is up 75%. How much more does the BOA think the Nashua taxpayers can take? As board members willing to go to their wards and tell them that they must put property taxes over food on their table, put property taxes over their mortgage or rent, now is the time the board must put residents' needs over anything else and must say no to R24089. Thank you. Next person for public comment. Name and address for the record. Mm -hmm. Beth Scare, 111 East Hobart Street. Um, I'm speaking. I'm here to speak against uh, R24089. Um, <laughs> and um, this is to exempt $45 million from the spending cap calculation. Um, this is insane. It, you know, I, I don't know if I can say anything to change anyone's mind about this, but um, 
First of all, I want to say, Alderman O'Brien, you and I discussed the spending cap in November 2023, and you insisted we didn't have a spending cap. We got into a heated argument where you said we have a tax cap and that it wasn't enforced. And after, you know, a few minutes, it was escalating, and I decided I wasn't going to win this argument, but of course I was right that we do have a spending cap and it is in force. And that concerns me that you're a, co a sponsor on a co-sponsor on this resolution. Um, when you aren't really tuned in, it seems, to what's going on in the city, what's in our charter. Um, I'm afraid that a lot of, that too many of our aldermen aren't paying attention to the budget, the spending, um, the the problems of our taxpayers here in Nashua. Um, as part of my job, I've been all over the city talking to voters. Um, senior citizens have told me many, many times how much inflation is, is cutting into their budget, how much, how difficult it is to pay their property taxes, how they're considering, they're feeling like they're being forced to move out of the city. I've talked to young people who can't find housing and are, you know, the, of course the property taxes drive up their rents. Um, they're suffering, they have children. I talked to a family where they are having to choose between rent and um, groceries for their kids, you know, food for their kids. Um, it's, it's really difficult for people and I just can't fathom what, what that anyone would want to do this to our taxpayers. Thank you. Next public comment. Name and address for the record. Okay, my name is Fred uh, T. Boom, 24 Cheyenne Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire. Chairman Dowd, you should step down as chairman because this budget committee totally mismanages the budget. Totally. Here's an example. So look at page 16 and 17 of your budget book, the adopted budget. You'll find such things as supplemental appropriations. This is after the budget is adopted. As an example, I haven't got time to three minutes to go to any detail. Five million dollars, assigned fund balance transfer. You take money from the fund balance, five million dollars. Another four million dollars, R24018. Another five hundred thousand dollars. After twenty-four or four, you keep jacking up the budget. After the budget's been adopted, you call it supplemental appropriations, and it's complete mismanagement. And as an example, I'm doing this this handout. I've got much time for many handouts, but I like. There's only four of you here. What five? I'm the seven supposed to be here. And what that shows you, and give me one of the sheets for you. I gave you too, one too many. Thank you. I have I like to, I like to make that part of the uh, minutes. John, can I have one back? John? I'll give you mine. No, no, okay. You can have the rest. Okay. If you look at it, you see the second column, tabulate supplemental appropriations. From 2010, this is when Mayor Lowe's was in office, all the way to 2019, you see there was almost no money put in supplemental appropriations. Less than a million dollars every time. And then you get past the point where we had a so-called no spending cap till the legislature fixed it. And starting in 2022, $80.5 million. $23 million, $24 million, and now you want $47.4 million into supplemental appropriations. If that is not mismanagement, I don't know what mismanagement is. Mr. Chairman, you need to resign. You have no control over this budget committee. The budget committee has no control over the budget. I don't think you understand it. I don't think Ms. Bolsch understands it. I don't know who understands it, but few of you do. Thank you. Next for public comment. A 
Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. I'm here to speak about the establishment of the fund balance and using it for a tax rate reduction and also the charter limitation on the budget increase, 089. Um, first of all, I think it's really important that when we're explaining these budget issues that we speak in very simple and clear terms for the public to understand the implications. I think a lot of what's going on in our budget is not clear for us to understand. And I want to understand more about what's happening here. As far as the fund balance for the tax rate, it looked like there was 44 million left over this year. I was upset about 17 or 18 million being left over last year. And I need to understand what happened there in that fund balance and why it ended up being so large and what we're going to allocate that to rather than return it all and keep a flat uh, 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 tax increase at zero. And as far as um, the charter limitations, I think we have to really understand, I'm very concerned about our debt ceiling and what we're doing now. We have an ad hoc bond committee, and I'm wondering if you folks have studied what, are the, what the bond levels are of surrounding cities compared to us and their budgets, looking at Portsmouth, London, um, Manchester, Keene, Concord, and some of the cities. I know we're not matched up in size, but it would give you an idea on what their debt, debt service is compared to their budgets. Because we've come right in, and we're carrying an awful lot of interest in our principal payments now on our bonds. And I know interest rates were low, and we, we tended to bond everything. But I spoke to you that there is a financial a manual policy on the finance page, a large book that I believe was done by Mr. Griffin in 2000. 11 that recommended we don't bond anything for under $5 million. We do a lot of bonding for under $5 million now, perhaps because the rates were lower. But what, what do we want to do now as rates have creep, uh, crept up to 4 or 5 or 5.5%? Five and, um, and I know they just took a tick down, but you know we're dealing with a different interest rate schedule from what we were used to two years ago. So I would... In, I would also ask you, you are connected to a lot of the charitable organizations in this city. Has anyone sent a letter to the, all the various organizations to find out what they see for their increase in needs and how they look? Because that's going to give you a little bit of a pulse on what's going on for those most in need. Because our church did say Corpus Christi had a 35% uptick on food and 75 on rental assistance. And rental assistance is a big one because that, those people need money. And it's not a small amount. Rent is high in the city. You've got you to gotta cut some big checks to deal with that, way more than food. So I would encourage you to put, you know, I encourage this board and all aldermen to lean into these budget issues and get a much better understanding about what is going on, speak in plain English, and help educate us out here about what is happening so Time. we understand. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Brad Westgate. I'm a lawyer with Weiner and Bennett, uh, 402 uh, Amherst Street here in Nashua. And I represent uh, Blaylock Holdings LLC, uh, which is the prospective uh, developer of the Mohawk Tannery site. Wanted to speak just very briefly in support of R24084. This resolution is another step in the process uh, to, uh, in this case, uh, deal with some of the funding for the remediation for the project. As the committee is well aware, the property has significant environmental issues, substantial remediations necessary in order to make it a developable parcel. The master development agreement that this board authorized between Blaylock and the city contemplates all these funding steps, one of which is a, a bond funding from the New Hampshire Housing and Redevelopment Authority, uh, which pertains to this particular resolution. So all this resolution does, uh, Mr. Chairman, is essentially the following. It'll set a base valuation for the project site during this remediation time frame so that when the t um, valuation on the property starts to go up, the tax revenue that comes over that base valuation will be used to pay the bond that would be issued by the housing authority as part of the remediation funding pr process. And the other step is this simply contemplated a pledge agreement by which the city would pledge that incremental tax revenue over and above that derived from the base valuation 
to the housing authority so the housing authority has that source of funding to pay back the bonds. Once all that is done, all tax revenue from the project would go to the city and to the regular general fund. And obviously the goal of all of this from a revenue perspective is that substantial um, use is made of this property, a lot of improvements done, and a significant revenue stream then goes online for the city for, for the indefinite future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Other public comment? Seeing none. <clears throat> Communications? None. Unfinished business? We have none. New business resolutions? Before us this evening is R 24 080. <clears throat> Relative to the transfer of 58,000 from Department 194 Contingency Account 70120 Contingency Police Grants to Department 150 Police Account 51100 Wages Full Time. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make the motion to recommend final passage. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24080. Is there someone here to uh, explain uh, this resolution? Good evening, Karen Smith, NPD Business Manager. Uh, this is a grant that we've had for over 20 years, and this was a seed grant for the Domestic Violence Unit. And it served us well over the years. Uh, started off as 75% federal funded with a 25% match. Over the years, the grant had come down a little bit, uh, although the salaries and benefits, as you know, over 20 years has increased. Therefore, the grant has flip-flopped, and uh, we are now paying 75%. The grant is matching 25%. So we um, have had a vacancy in the area, in the division, and now is the time to move away from the grant. We have funding set aside in a cash match for the grant that we would ask that we move that money out of the contingency account into our um, operating budget. Um, number one, we're going to be able to attract a position as a budget funded versus a grant funded uh, um, much easier. Um, also, the restrictions that we have um, as far as the reporting, the data analysis that has to be collected, the time spent on the grant versus to be spent on the actual unit operations, um, the administrative time um, could be better served in the unit. Um, and then um, just um, overall limiting anything that we have for policies and such, um, it's time for us to move. and we. Uh, respectfully ask for you to consider this. Does anyone on the Budget Committee have, need to have any clarifying questions for Ms. Smith? Alderman Sullivan? Thank you. I just want to make sure I heard you right. Um, so this used to be, this money goes to fund a position. Yes. And that position used to be paid for via grant that was predominantly uh, 75 percent, I believe you said, funded by the feds, and 25 percent cash match local. And since then, that has gone away. You do have money available to move into this account so you can hire a grant writer. Am I correct? Or did I hear you right? Uh, it's not a grant writer. It, this is a domestic violence advocate position okay. that we would. There's a grant, and there are two positions in the in the. Um, DV unit, and we were able to use our cash match that was set aside for salaries okay. and move that over. Um, and uh, yes, the funds are in the budget as a contingency. Mm -hmm. It's not in our budget, it's in a contingency account, and we would like to move it from contingency to the operating budget. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you for explaining. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other qu clarifying questions? Thank you. Okay. Okay. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24080. Any mm -hmm. comments, questions? Alderman Wilshire. Thank you. Um, this position is sorely needed. I mean, 
we had it and and you know it hasn't been filled for for some time but in the uh, at the police commission meeting the other night we learned that there were 147 calls for domestic violence in the month of august so i'm going to support this anyone else Yes, I was at the, the same meeting, and um, this is a sorely needed uh, position. It's easier to fill if it's a budget item than a grant, because grants go away, and if they want to have somebody that's going to be long-term, this is the way to do it. And based on the uptick in domestic violence, uh, this is determined to be solely needed by our police department. Any other questions? Okay, motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24080. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. <coughs> O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Also before us this evening is R-24-081, establishing the use of uh, fund balance for the tax rate. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to recommend final passage. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24081. And who's going to come up and, and talk to this? Good, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. John Griffin, CFO. To my right is uh, Ms. Dawn Enright. She is the treasurer of tax collector, so we're kind of tag teaming up here a little bit. Before we start with this, um, I'm not sure how many of you have brought with you the mayor's report on overlay and surplus, and certainly I wouldn't expect any members of the public to have that, so I'd like Ms. Enright to pass that document out as a frame of reference as we discuss <coughs> the amount we'd like to use against the tax rate. Thank you. Two, one for the record, if you have it. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, this particular document is authored by Mayor Donchus. It's required to be submitted to the Board of Aldermen on or before September 1st of each year. And uh, it was in your September 11th packet with the memo and the um, attachment. And also, as part of that document, the mayor indicates his intention to file an amount to use against the tax rate for the coming year. And he indicated that it was gonna be a $6 million value. So looking at the exhibit that's attached, and this is a pretty much a presentation I put on every year before you folks, but the projected un unassigned fund balance as of 630, this, this actually is a type, it should be 630, 2024. We're, we're projecting that balance to be 44.1 million. And from that, we'd like to use 6 million against the tax rate. We've used 4 million, 8 million, this year 6 million. The adjusted balance in the unassigned fund balance is 38.18 million. That's up approximately 3 million from the balance last year. So the 44 million, just for clarification, is not surplus. The 44 million is the unassigned fund balance that needs to be at least 10% of the current year budget. In this case, if we divide the 38.189 projected by the 340 million general fund budget. 
it's 11.2%. By ordinance, it needs to be 10. So that's the top part of this particular um, analysis. Below, the mayor is also required to provide a recap of overlay. And we have a fairly healthy overlay balance as of June 30th, 2024 of 11.26 million. We're believing that we have to put a nominal amount in because this is the value that the DRA uses to make sure we get a tax rate that ends in a, in a penny. If you didn't do that, we'd have, you know, could be 1.2 cents or something like that. So I thought it'd be important to explain that. Now, how did we get the 44 million? We basically, with the help of my staff, we analyzed the revenues and appropriations not spent as of June 30th, 2024. And fortunately, uh, we had a, a healthy surplus from revenue 15 million, and those were predominantly generated from motor vehicle revenues and the investments we made in CDs in the market of about 5 million. So the, the total is a little bit of uh, uh, excess revenues over budget in the hydro area, but predominantly it was motor vehicle revenue and interest income. What, what I did, and as the CFO, I can recommend to the mayor and you folks right now is I took the 21 million. I knew we were going to grow the, the unassigned fund balance by three, so that leaves us 18. I knew we were going to apply 6 million against the tax rate, so that leaves us 12 million. 12 million of surplus. And as I did last year, my recommendation was to assign, put, put the 12 million in assigned fund balance which adds to the total fund balance, but it's assigned in the sense that we can let the, uh, let the reader know of our financials that it's assigned for future liabilities. Similar to last year, we used five million to fund SURF later in the year, and we used four million to shore up the balance in the internal service fund for benefits. So, as much as we would like to put more in the tax rate, we're trying to balance the needs on an appropriation basis with some of the other needs. And the six million, so six million SURF, don't have to come in tomorrow for that. We have to look at things over the course of the year. But there's another six million that was generated from, or an, out, an outgrowth of the ad hoc committee, uh, Mr. Chairman and others. What we found in the ad hoc committee is not only do we need to do less bonding, but we also need to pay for things in so-called cash that are in a, a less than a couple of million dollars. So by assigning it to, to fund balance, the administration will be coming in with uh, proposals, supplemental appropriations to, to fix things. Right off the top of my head is money to, to help Greeley Park and the Stonehouse, hydroelectric fish ladder, and other things. But um, Mr. Cummings and, and myself and the team of the ad hoc committee and others, we, we have a healthy list of things we need on an annual basis. What we've been dealing with over the last several years is a very inadequate capital improvement program budget. I think we all know that putting 50,000 for eight fire stations and 100,000 for 20 school buildings is not adequate. So we're trying to recognize that using the surplus, we'll be able to take care of things that are desperately needed going forward. And the Board of Aldermen and the citizens can take a look at those and um, decide whether they should be approved. The difference, the material difference this year is we're not going to be coming in with any what's called unlike escrows. Unlike escrows are escrows that were for a certain purpose adopted by the Board of Aldermen, but historically we want to change the purpose, and to do that we need Board of Aldermen approval. So we, we're not, 
we're not going to be doing that this year. So think of it this way, the six million that's going to be supplementally appropriated replace the unlike escrows that you've probably approved at least for the last decade or two, two decades. So the, the six million against the tax rate with my analysis of the tax rate increase is, is going to be less than a 4% increase. That's kind of what we came to. Now, every two and a half million is 1% on the tax rate. So with six million, it's uh, slightly less than, than a 2%, slightly less than a 3% reduction, but nonetheless, the tax rate would be higher if we didn't do this. We're hoping as we go through the final closeout and the analysis of revenues, when we get the tax rate forms done, we're hoping we can do a little bit better than that number, but that's the target at this point. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone from the Budget Committee have any amplifying questions, clarifying questions, as Alderman Sullivan? Clarifying and amplifying, yes. Um, you, uh, Mr. Griffin, uh, on the handout that you gave us, I saw the unassigned fund balance and then the overlay recapped. Could you please um, reacquaint me with uh, the meaning of, of what the overlay is, what the purpose of it is, please? Certainly, the, the overlay is essentially an amount put aside as part of the tax rate to pay for abatements, interest on the abatements, and any defensive values that, uh, that arise. And that's, that's something that um, when I came in 2010, that's the approach they took. Some, some uh, jurisdictions, they, they may just pay the principal amount of an abatement reduce the interest income and pay for defensive values or analyses uh, through the no normal budget. But in this case, it's been very consistent, consistent approach and consistently applied. Follow-up Follow -up question, Thank Alderman you. Sullivan. Thank you for the explanation. You also uh, went into some detail <clears throat> on surplus accounts, $15 million, I believe the amount was. I, that's where I lost you because I didn't see anything on this worksheet with, with that information. Is there, is there a place where I can see that, where, where it's uh, published? Um, is it on the front page? Mr. Chairman, it's in, yes. if I may, it's not, it's not published. It's my analysis of what the revenue surplus would be. And revenue is a little bit, easier to follow because if you looked at the um, published financial statements for the year ended June, if we've even published them, but in any event, I can get you the analysis at the, at the divisional level of the revenue that exceeds the uh, budget. So that's the 15 million. So you'll have financial services, hydroelectric, interest income, most of it's in the financial services area, but that's the 15 million revenue surplus over budget. Okay, one more please. Follow up question. Uh, and I was trying to follow you, so out of that 15 million, six, six million is gonna go to the tax rate to pay down the general fund, right? That's to pay down the tax rate, correct. That's gonna come off the, that's gonna come off the 340 million 790? Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, it, it's basically um, in our MS-1 submittal to the DRA and other filings, we recognized that we had surplus and we're going to use $6 million of it to reduce the tax rate. So it, essentially it's a revenue to reduce the tax rate. Okay. And then the, and then the balance of that $15 million, you mentioned escrow projects and whatnot that would be used as, as in the balance that we'll see probably in a few weeks. Right, maybe I can, uh, just another clarifying point, Alderman Sullivan, is the 15 million is revenue over, surp over budget. Sure. The six million is appropriations not spent, so you really have to add those two together. Okay. So it's 21 million minus the six against the tax rate, minus three million to grow the unassigned fund balance. And the, the six million, the twelve million, 
I've indicated that there's about $6 million worth of projects that everybody discussed at length uh, during the ad hoc committee when they came in and advocated for, for let's say, bonding, but in, in, there was kind of a notion that if we can use surplus appropriations not spent, that would be preferable. Mm -hmm. So a little bit confusing, but 2015 revenue plus six appropriations not spent, 21, minus six against the tax rate, minus three to grow the unassigned balance leaves us 12. And where I put that is I put that in a, what's called assigned fund balance. Okay. And furthermore, you're absolutely correct. To the extent we want to actually have you appropriate those monies, we have to come before you with a resolution. And one more, please. Sure. And yeah. those 12 million, those will be supplemental appropriations against the fiscal year 2025 budget. That, that's correct. Okay. Any other amplifying questions from the board? Okay. The motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24081, establishing the use of fund balance for the tax rate. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Also before us this evening is R-24-084, establishing the initial valuation of a taxable property in a Mohawk Tannery redevelopment project, allocating tax revenue from the Mohawk Tannery redevelopment project and authorized entering into a pledge agreement with the Nashua Housing and Redevelopment Authority all in construction with a, a bond not to exceed uh, $2,500,000 power amount to be issued by the National Housing and Redevelopment Authority. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to recommend final passage. So the motion on the floor is to recommend final passage of R24084. Does anyone on the... Budget committee require further explanation that was provided by uh, Attorney Westgate, yes, Solomon Sullivan. Thank you. It was mentioned uh, in Mr. Westgate's, Westgate's apologies, uh, public comment. And the way that I understand this resolution, and I want to make sure that I'm fully aware of what I'm voting in favor of, we're placing a, an initial valuation on the entire Mohawk Tannery development at $100,000. And then once it's built, then we'll reassess it, and anything over that $100,000, the tax revenue collected will, the, on the first $100,000 will go back to the general fund, but the balance will go to pay off this $2.5 million bond. Am I understanding that right? If I may, Mr. Greg Chairman. Cummings. Yes, Tim Cummings, Director of Administrative Services. Uh, essentially, yes, Alderman Sullivan, as you've, as you've described, that's as, uh, how it will, uh, will be implemented. So we will have, um, and I'm not exactly sure the, uh, uh, the number of parcels, but I'm gonna say approximately four to five under common ownership will be set with an initial valuation of $100,000, and then um, it will be reassessed as time goes on through the traditional assessing prop process, and whatever that increment is above that $100,000 uh, would be dedicated, set aside to pay the note and the, and the, and the loan payment of the, of the 2.5 up until that is paid off, and then the monies would be put into the general fund. Oh, is that an additional question? I'll yes, answer. please. Um, do we have an idea of what this, uh, for the $2.5 million bond, the term of the bond, is it typically going to be 30 years? Is it going to be, how do, how do we know? Um, if, if I may, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Dr. Cummings. I, I believe it's 20 years. Yeah, I'm asking Attorney Westgate because I'm yes. not 100% sure, but I believe it's 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, if I may, uh, for the record, Brad Westgate, counsel for Playlock Holdings LLC. Um, the bond will actually be paid off 
as fast as the incremental revenue pays it off, if you will. So um, being that it's only $2.5 million, the, whatever is generated in each particular year will go, all of that incremental revenue will go to the bond to pay the bond down. And it could be, frankly, relatively promptly, depending upon how quickly the reassessed valuation goes up. So it's, it did, it'll, it would, it's not likely it would ever go as long as even 20 years. Right? But when we write a bond, we normally put a time right. limit on it, so it be a 20-year, 30-year. There's a way so, longer overall time limit right, right, to than, do than that. Right, necessary. Yeah, so it's, so it's my understanding that it, it, from the New Hampshire Business Finance Authority's uh, perspective, they're the ones who would be actually uh, buying the bond. It's a 20 years, but the way the loan will be structured, as Attorney Westgate outlined, is we will be paying whatever money's eligible or available through the increment towards the note, whatever that dollar amount is, up until that 2.5 is paid, and we believe that's going to, as, as mentioned, be, be done Subject to the construction market and assessing values, we believe that's going to be somewhere in a five to ten year window. Okay. Um, Any additional questions? I do. I, I have one more. Mm -hmm. My other, my last question is, and you know, I certainly understand and, and, and take your word for it. However, and maybe I'm missing it, I don't. I did not see, and I read through the resolution a couple of times, so please point it out if I've missed it, where in the resolution it states that once the bond is paid off, then all tax funds will then go into the uh, general fund. I didn't see that in there. Uh, I would. I would have to double check to see if it's in here explicitly, but as I understand it, the way it's written at the 2.5, once paid, it would automatically, by virtue of our process, go into the general fund. It would, the obligation would no longer be there, and it would, uh, the fund would stop, because this is this money is going to need to be held aside in a sec in a separate fund, so that there would be no need anymore for that fund to exist, and therefore it would just all accrue to the general fund. Um, I'll, uh, okay, uh, just a comment, please. Uh, when, I, when I first read through this, my concerns were, I thought the initial valuation of the property was set pretty low, considering I think that the difference between the initial valuation of 100000 and once this is built out is going to be substantial. I do see in, in the verbiage of the resolution that the difference in the taxes collected will go towards the bond. I didn't see where after that it would, would go through. So my concern initially, but now listening to this, but I will be uh, scanning this resolution before a, a final vote. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, with, with at least 500 units coming online, these folks are going to need police, fire protection, schools, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to make sure that after this bond is paid, that, that these funds do flow into the general fund to, to take on that pressure. So uh, Attorney Westgate was just pointing out to me that in R24084, it looks like uh, second page. It's just saying here, and I'm going to read it. Whereas the authority is authorized by authority resolution number 242456 to enter into a pledge agreement with the city of Nashua pursuant to RSA 2054C, providing that the principal and interest of the New Hampshire Redevelopment Authority bond will be repaid by a pledge to the authority by the city of all the project incremental tax revenue until principal and interest on the New Hampshire, I'm sorry, the Nashua Housing Redevelopment Authority bond is paid in full. And I think Treasurer Collector Enright has something to add. Don Enright, yes. uh, Treasurer Tax Collector. Um, maybe I can clarify this just a little bit. Um, they, these properties will be on the tax roll. Mm -hmm. As soon as they are, are um, built, Mm -hmm. in, in operation, they will be on the tax roll. 
with RSA 2054C, that gives us the authority to deduct that amount from the amount raised by taxation. As soon as that is satisfied, as stated here, we no longer will have a deduction from the total assessed value that is taxed to raise taxes against the budget. Does that clarify? It does, but just to make sure, even though it doesn't say in this resolution, I, I hear what Director Cummings is saying. It says, we pay it till the bond is paid off. But then I feel we're missing a sentence where it should say, at that point, all monies collected will flow into the general fund. But what you're saying is, Ms. Enright, is RSA 2054C accounts for that? Yes. 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 It does. Okay. Yes. And, and if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Director Cummings. So this is one of the reasons why I try not to use the word TIF for this particular project, because unlike in a TIF, there isn't a desire to capture and keep the money segregated into a separate fund for a certain period of time. Truly, it's for the, the obligation that we have. Once that obligation is satisfied, uh, it will, you know, contemporaneously, if you will, be uh, satisfied, and then the monies should uh, accrue and in, in, in an earn into, into the general fund. Um, relative to the $100,000 base valuation, um, one of the reasons why we did that is because we wanted to pay the note off as fast as possible. And uh, the higher the increment we can have, the, the, the quicker that obligation gets paid off, which would then give more monies into the general fund free and clear um, after a few years. Thank you. So the motion on the floor is to recommend final passage to the full board of R24084. If there are no additional questions or discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Also before us this evening is R24-089, approving an exemption for fiscal year 2025 from the Charter's limitation on budget increases. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make the motion to recommend final passage. Motion on the floor is to recommend final passage to the full board of R24089, approving the, the exemption for fiscal year 2025 from the Charter limitation on budget increases. Uh, Mr. Griffin? Certainly, uh, Mr. Chairman, John Griffin, CFO. This particular, what I always refer to as a pressure relief valve, has been part of the spending cap since its inception. There's no, it's no override if you're familiar with Massachusetts taxation. This is an exemption of items that are in the budget. There's two specific areas that we can exempt. One is debt service, and the other is capital projects. <clears throat> Looking at the fiscal 24 adopted budget, the particular number here that's being exempted is the total amount of principal and interest throughout that budget. Totals to 45 million. What this ends up doing is increasing the available budget under the cap so other things can be appropriated. We've discussed a little bit tonight some of those things. Some of those things would include, <coughs> excuse me, the six million of assigned fund balance for the special or important capital projects that need to be done, hopefully in fiscal 25. <coughs> the possibility if we decide to fund fiscal 26 surf purchases, similar to how we funded fiscal 25 surf purchases, we could move what I've estimated as six million supplementally into the SURF fund so it doesn't need to be budgeted next year. There's still a debate that I think we should have is should we, should we budget SURF within the budget year or should we use this strategy to use surplus amounts to fund? So th those two things total 12 million. You couldn't do 
much of them with the 1.3 million remaining. The other thing that we determined over the course of the ad hoc committee is that there was an interest in bonding 3.5 million for the police department training facility. And there's also an interest to bond 15 million for the parking garage rehab projects. You could not, because of the way we've adopted the spending cap, you, you couldn't appropriate those two bonding authorizations without room under the cap. So this is a, this is a situation where if we want to do those projects, we would need to provide some cap space. One other item on the uh, one set of items is the refuse uh, vehicles that are going to be bonded. That they need cap space too. I think they're about two million dollars. So, in summary, the cap is we're constricted by the cap right now, and we need to take the debt service out of the cap calculation, so exempt it, to be able to provide needed space. Um, good comments we've received, um, other than the plans that I just articulated. I don't, I don't think there's anything else that's gonna come before us unless there's a catastrophe. So the sum of all those bonding authorizations and the 12 million is 30, about 30 million. So the bonding authorizations provide for the ability to do the projects and pay them over 20 years. The 12 million of surplus that, as I mentioned, historically was the board's approval of unlike <coughs> escrows. It's just a different way of looking at it. The, the, the purpose of using supplemental appropriations as, as described is we can close the books, not be waiting for the approval of unlike escrows, we can get a good number, which we've done uh, with the $21 million worth of surplus. So, so that's, that's pretty much how this works. Um, it's been done before. Um, those of you that might have been around when uh, Mayor Streeter was in office, I think there was a Claremont decision that produced about 22 million, according to my discussion with Treasurer, former Treasurer for Debt, that you couldn't even accept the money and appropriate it because you didn't have cap space. There might have been another time, but, but I remember several years ago, uh, I asked Deputy Corporation Counsel Clark to at least show me how this is done. And typically it's done at the beginning of the budget season, but it can be done as we learned a few years ago when we had the bonding and, and the spending cap discussions. It can be done once a year and only once a year. And um, that's a little bit of the background. So it's been used, but not, not um, extensively or frequently. The other observation I'd like to make, and just I think in the spirit of sharing information, is um, we've done a nice job on the bonding plan. The bonding plan includes school debt. A lot of times when you call up maybe to the DRA or something and they, they look and they observe, um, we have a dependent school district where we're bonding for them. So a lot of the other cities and towns, uh, Manchester, Concord, they, they don't have dependent school districts. So when they say, hey, I bonded, Ms. Enright will say they bond up to 15 million a year. It doesn't include the school, school district. And I think Alderman Dowd has pretty good knowledge of what's happening in Manchester. So it's like, if you, if you include the city of Nashua's dependent school district bonding and you look at Manchester's city bonding plus this in independent school district, you might get some different numbers. The other thing is, um, I, fortunately I was here since 2010, so remember those days we had a spending cap that was minuscule, we had inflation at I think one year was less than 1%. So you, you couldn't even do any supplemental appropriations without exempting debt and the spending cap, and there wasn't an appetite for it at that time. So that's why using this method, we're able to, um, to do more things. It is, a, it is expensive, but it's, it's the, um, the 12 million surplus. 
And my judgment working with the team, the mayor's team, is that you probably need to fix the stone house. You probably need to figure out how to build a fish ladder over the hydroelectric dam um, and, other, and other things. Those are, those are kind of the things we weigh. And as Alderman Sullivan said, we're, we're going to be coming in with those resolutions uh, if we can. And if we can depends on this particular um, resolution. Thank you. Clarifying questions? So many. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. I'm, I'm going to go off the fiscal year 25 worksheet, but just some big questions. We just approved the budget less than 90 days ago. How did we get here so soon? I would expect a, I, I would expect a discussion like this maybe in February or March, but According to the worksheet that we have here, we're, we're, we're three and a half million dollars under the cap with the budget that we approved. And didn't we just approve bonds last week of $23 million? So aren't we already over the cap? Mr. Chairman, if I may. Mr. Griffin. So with regard to those bonds, great question. Um, wastewater and solid waste, we actually budgeted for those. Um, so they're already on, they're already part of the two hundred and fifty uh, the four hundred and fifty six million. Okay. So as you recall, there was five things on that budget review committee. The first four were bonding, already included in the budget. That was the fourteen. The fourteen. Fourteen million. Yep. There was fourteen. There was a three. There was the last one as uh, sustainability manager um, Deb Chisholm came in and explained is. Great news, we got this $1 million grant, but it wasn't anticipated in the budget. So that, that's the big number, uh, Alderman Sullivan. If you look at line 32, the, a million of that was that particular resolution that you approved. The other items of the grants that, that um, the first one, the grant 301027, that, that was a grant that wasn't anticipated. So that has to come off the spending cap. Alderman Sullivan? Yep, just trying to play catch up here. Um, so the total debt service that we would have paid this year was $45 million, you mentioned. And, and how does this affect us going forward? Because inflation is going down and has been going down. I'm assuming that our IPD number, which was 5.4%, will most likely be a little less. Does that $45 million then come back like a zombie and then hamstring us going forward? What happens in the out years? Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, so the $45 million is what's included in this budget. Good question. What happens if that's 50 million? Well, 50 million is going to have to fit under the cap. So no matter whether you use general fund, general fund and enterprise fund, anything on this list, you are going to be uh, constrained, if you will, by a reducing index, which is the state and local government imp implicit price deflator. It's a mouthful, but that's going to come down. The other things that are going to come down, which you've seen most recently, is the CPIU numbers. So you'll be, if if in a in a um, if inflation comes down and the index comes down, the ability to spend is going to be curtailed by the spending cap calculation. But it's it's not going to. It's the reality, and I haven't done the pro forma yet, but. It's the reality of how all these numbers at the top operate. The added value of like line 23, the 23.6 million, that's the calculation of taking the total appropriations and multiplying by the index. Okay, so next year when we're doing budget calculations and let's just, for hypothetical, 
let's just call it 5%. So we're going to take, are we going to take 5%? Because we're going to, if we take 456 and we exempt 45 million, that takes us down to 411. So that'll be our total appropriation number after, if, if this passes? Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, th this is a one, this is a fiscal 25 only situation. You would have to do the same exemptions next year if you needed to. So it doesn't bring, it, it, the, what's gonna happen is you're gonna exempt the debt, have the ability to spend the things, spend appropriate the things I just discussed. But next year you start all over again. You start with the, you know, the, the, the numbers in fiscal 25 are gonna to be to the left. Gonna have some supplemental appropriations. Gonna get a total. And you're going to be, you're gonna to have to apply that index to that new total. But the new, the new total is less the exemption. No, it's not, excuse me, it's not gonna be less the exemption. So it's not going to be 411. No, that's correct. So it'll be it'll be five percent added on. I'm just saying five percent for hypothetical. It'll be five percent added on to the 456. Correct. But what we're saying is, we're we're relieving pressure on this budget, so we can bond other things. So we're going to go back 45, but we're really going to go up another. 18, 19, 20 million on top of that? We're going to go up um, 3.5 million for the police training facility, 15 million for the garages, roughly 2 million for the refuse trucks. That's on the bonding side. So what's going to happen there is that won't affect debt service next year. That will affect debt service the year after we sell the bonds. Mm. The 12 million, which is the combination of the 6 million for SURF and the 6 million for the other projects, that's going to be in. That's going to be in the supplemental appropriation areas. Because mm -hmm. so recently right. we approved a uh, capital expenditure plan, the ad hoc committee, and in order to do those projects that are on that list for next year, or this year, we need to have this passed to allow it to be part of the budget. It's not, and each of those projects still has to be approved by the full board to go forward. We haven't addressed those bonds yet, but it's in the bonding plan that we approved. But in order to be able to get those approved in accordance with that plan we approved, we need this space in the budget. Why don't we just exempt what we need? Why don't we just exempt, let's say, the, the, the 20 million for the bonds and then the supplemental appropriations from escrows on top of that, let's call it 30. Why don't we just exempt the 30, the 30 million instead of the 45? Am I making sense? It, uh, you may, I mean, Mr. Chairman, if I yes, may, you, you can, the way the, the way it reads is you, you can exempt any or all. So that tells me you could, you could exempt what you think you need and what I'd recommend is a little bit more in case you definitely need something that you can't do. <clears throat> you have one chance to exempt the um, debt and or capital. So if, if, if we do this amount and we don't use this amount, it's not affecting anything. It's, we won't be spending that money. If, if we were to approve less and it went over, we'd be back doing the same thing again. And, and this is what they have estimated to be the requirement to do what we've already said we wanted to do with the capital projects. So if we do nothing, We only have three and a half million left under the cap, so we could do the police building. We would we just have to punt on the. Well, a couple, couple of things, may, uh, Mr. Chairman, if yes, I may. Yes, Mr. Griffin. What's left now is the million four, because you've already yeah. appropriated yeah. some of the other things. Um, 
You want to leave a little bit of cushion if you get grants that you don't expect. That was one of the fears of one of, one of your colleagues. Um, but if you don't, you can't do much if you don't exempt. Uh, but and just to remind you, if we get a grant, it's people giving us money, it's not coming out of the tax rate, but we need to have this exemption to allow us to use it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to accept the grant. And just point of clarification, Mr. Chairman, that's only if the grant isn't already in the budget. We've done yes. a nice job. Uh, teams do a great job with the anticipation of grants. Um, but if, like Ms. Chisholm indicated the other day, um, you know, we got a mil somebody's going to give us a million dollars, and that went through because you had cap space. Any additional clarifying questions? None? Mm -hmm. All right, the motion on the floor is to recommend to the full board final passage of R24089, approving an exemption for fiscal year 2025 from the charter's limitation on budget increases. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Pretty sure that was three to two. Yeah. It passes. Two business ordinances. There are none. Stable in committee. There is none. General discussion. Uh, All of the Senate. Thank you. Um, I didn't get a chance to ask a lot of the questions I had in front of me, but rather than dwell on that, I'll just, um, I'll extend my thanks to Alderman Sullivan for taking them from me. <laughs> um, I understand the, the situation that we're in, but um, I, I just, doing the math here, some folks probably saw me typing and typing and typing away. I struggle with exempting 45 million just to add 30 and a half million. It, it's, it, it's, it's just a tough egg for me to crack. I understand the situation that we're in and the projects that we have before us. But um, I, I think like Alderman Sullivan, I, I would have just liked to have had this conversation earlier, maybe Maybe a longer conversation, but it's, it's before us now, and I, I just wanted to put my thoughts on that. Thank you. Alderman Sullivan? Thank you. Uh, just to echo that, I, you know, I, I, I really struggle with it because this, this debt situation, um, you know, it's at the micro level here at the city. It's also at the, the macro level in our country, and understanding that, that, that on paper, I think that our city does a good and responsible job and, and kudos to the ad hoc committee for planning ahead. But here we are and, and while, you know, the thing, when I first read this, when it first came out, the thing that I kept, that kept rolling around in my head is we can exempt it, but it's still there and we still have to pay for it. And we can exempt it from the budget all we want, but it still affects, it, it still affects us. And my concern is that this, that this could just come back to haunt us in future years, and we're gonna be back here again, um, knowing that inflation is going in the way that it's going, that the spending cap is gonna get tighter and tighter. And I, I think that to, to Alderman Senate's point, I think it's going to take a longer discussion um, to really look at look at the five-year plan of, of where the city's going, and not just not just talk about the spending side, but the revenue side as well. How we can improve on that, and by that I don't mean just raise taxes on residences, but there's got to be more creative ways that we can do that. Uh, and I would rather have those discussions than these discussions. 
but that's why I had to, I, I just, I didn't have a good feeling with, about it in, in the pit of my stomach, so I just had to say no tonight. Thanks. So I believe any of the items that were covered under that 45 million still each have to come before the board for final approvals. It, this doesn't spend that money. It just means that if we do spend it, it it's already under the, the cap expenditure. So um, every one of those bond issues is all going to have to come before the full board, get passed by 10 votes. and and. If they aren't, then at the end of the year, if we don't do the 45 million for whatever reason, that doesn't count against next year's. It's only what's spent. So you've got the space, but you don't have to reach that total amount. And I understand that, but it's like you, you're just going like this, but it's still there. I mean, because the way I understood it is we're just exempting the $45 million that we're paying on the, ta on the, on the debt service this year. I mean, that's the way I understood it. It's, uh, direct, uh, Mr. Griffin, I don't think it's just the debt service this year, is it? Yeah, maybe, maybe I can add uh, John Griffin, CFO, the two items that were chosen by the team that put the spending cap in, subject to the provisions, is debt service. It's just a number that you're subtracting from the total cap and capital, capital improvements. So it's just a mechanism. I mean, they, I mean, as crazy as it sounds, they could have said, ex exempt police and fire salaries or something. It's just they, they chose something that didn't tie to um, people. You know, they're like inanimate objects, debt service and capital. But it, great clarifying questions. You, you're not, you still pay the debt service. We're still, hmm. this Enright's still gonna be paying the debt service and mm -hmm. it's gonna be there next year and what we tried to do with the ad hoc committee is lessen the increase of bonding, try to take advantage of surplus, pay off things that we would have bonded, and furthermore, with the, police, with the fire and the um, school department, try to figure out what you're going to need in the future. So it's a combination of things, not easy. Um, but that's... This is the mechanism that we have to um, increase cap space one time and only one time. You can't do it more than once. Uh, if we're just having an open discussion, right? I mean, I know we already took a vote. Automatic comments. Yeah. General okay. discussion. Discussion. Um, but if I if I took our our total budget of 456 million, which were which were the total appropriations, and I added five percent my hypothetical number, that's another 22.8 million that we can add, and we're adding it, we're adding it to the 456 million, correct? Right. Correct, yeah. plus any, any sup, we're supplementing the budget as well, so it's the 456 plus the 30 that we just talked about. And you get that number and multiply it by We're gonna it, be but right here again. We're gonna but be right but here again, again. It, what we're doing is exempting 45 million, but we're not approving 45 million. That 3.9 million for the police is gonna to have to come before us as a bond resolution. No, I, I, but we won't even be able to pass that if we don't have the room in the budget to pass it. We won't be able to do it. But we made and room. And the garages. But we made room. We just made room. Well, it's passed here. It has to be passed by the full board, but. <laughs> All right. Any other general discussion? Oh, yes. Uh, just, one, Senate. just one more. I, I, I recognize what we're doing here. And, you know, I, again, on, on paper, I understand it. I, I understand the mechanism. And, and to an extent, I even like it because what I really liked about the ad hoc committee is the spirit of planning. And, and, and I recognize that e this even, to an extent, 
is in harmony with the spirit of planning. We are, we are anticipating about 30 and a half million of supplemental appropriations over the coming year for this budget. And, and that's good. We should be having that conversation now. The, I just wonder if maybe this aspect of that conversation couldn't have started sooner. That, that's where I'm really struggling with it. That's all I got. <laughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, public comment. Right, T. Boom, 24 Cheyenne. I happen to be the author of the spending cap, passed it 30 years ago. Mr. Griffin, I'm glad to see you go. I'm really glad to see you leave. It's brought up again and again. The situation we are in today is a situation of your own making. Look at the handout I gave you yesterday, earlier. Supplemental appropriations, less than a million dollars year after year after year after year. When I was in Oldman, we didn't have supplemental appropriations ever. But it was adopted, that was it. We stuck with it. Look at the 2022, $80 million supplemental. 2023, $23 million. 24, 24.6. And you just, with a vote of three to two, adopt another 47.4 million of supplemental appropriations. Unacceptable. Oh, we have these needs. Spend, spend, spend blindly, thoughtlessly. An example how you got misled. Oh, Mr. Griffin came before you several years ago. Most of you run down the committee and come up with this new approach to the spending cap. And guess what he did? The example is of bonding. And I think John Sullivan said, how can you add bonding to a spending cap and you haven't even spent the bond yet? As, as an example, eight and a half million dollars. Okay? Page 11 of your budget book. Page 10. That eight and a half million dollars at this time, now, last I did interrogatories, that money hadn't even been bonded yet. How can that count against the spending cap? Madness. You only count against the spending cap the interest and principal of the current year, not the entire 20 years. Grants. We're never part of the spending gap. Boulder come up and says, state law says you have to have it. The national spending cap doesn't meet state law. It doesn't have to meet state law. It precedes the state law by 20 years. It was affirmed by the legislature with a single change, making one day change. None of that nonsense that Don just came up with about big changes. There were no big changes. I asked this committee, I asked this board, I asked Ms. Wilshire that I would come up here and explain the cap like I did 30 years ago. You weren't an alderman then, you were sitting in the audience. I explained the cap, it the flip charts. It got completely away from the meaning of the cap. This is the problem you're in today. I hope Ms. Enright will meet with me privately, we can go over this thing. But the situation, you're into today is totally your own doing. And Mr. Chairman, you ought to resign. You're a disgrace to this committee. You have no control over this budget. None. Thank you. Next for public comment, name and address. Laura Cahoon. I agree with Mr. T Bone that T Boom that you should retire. Get out of here. We don't need your uh, budget figures. If we give you, if we do this, and if we give you 30 million, that's gonna add 30 million onto our budget. We just, as the mayor said, it's only 3.74. 
That's bull. That's BS. It's actually seven point something. But you have no idea of what people in Nashua are doing. You obviously don't give a shit either. But you know, at nowadays, nowadays, language. you have to go and you have to say, you know what? I need this in my house, but I don't have the money. I'm going to have to do it next year. And that's what this city's going to have to start doing. Okay? The police, they need a new facility. Wait. That or get the membership for the Y. We don't need this. We, we're, we're topped out on spending. Okay? And, and you have no, no right to be in anything close to any figures. Thank you. Lori Ortolano, 41 Berkeley Street. Um, you know, this needed more vetting. This is a confusing topic, and I have questions, and there's no place for a citizen like me to ask questions. I don't understand from the beginning of the presentation why we have to do this, except my understanding is you're trying to open up space to do some more bonding projects. But we've had an ad hoc bonding committee, and the, that wasn't part of the, what was going to be done now. It needed to be done now. We knew we had to pick and choose. The $3.9 million for the police, that's low enough. Go cash. Don't bond. Um, you know, start picking out what you're going to do and not have to bond, potentially, because you do get surplus. But this is confusing to me, and I wasn't able to follow fully what was going on. Now, I'm going to replay this. I'm going to watch it. But I don't like what I hear. Um, you know, we're making room to run more debt. And, you know, if I'm not even certain if I understand this correctly, but if you don't do this, which I don't really want to see this done, does that mean you can't do those bonding projects next year? And if that's the case, wasn't that the point of the ad hoc committee, you know, to pick and choose and plan out how you were going to keep bonding below $30 million? I mean, I feel like we're so out of control, and this was not a topic to be handled. You know, you're missing two people here. It was not a robust discussion. Now it goes to the full board. There's no public comment period. This is not a board of aldermen that, you know, once a quarter opens the chamber up and says citizens come in and talk to us like they do in Manchester. You don't do that here. We don't get that opportunity. And... Um, you know, there's, this is a complex issue. I, I really don't like what I heard. I didn't understand all of it. I really appreciate your questions. I had some different questions, but again, my questions don't count. And I hope when it goes to the full board, there are robust questions from everybody, not just people that already got it figured out in their mind to vote for this. Um, when I saw the sponsors of this, and it was Gloria Timmons, you, Mike O'Brien, and Lori Wilshire, I felt like four people were in the know. And the rest of them all sat silently and didn't back it because I believe the rest of the board wasn't in the know. Um, and the people who did back it aren't saying anything. So, you know, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not keen on this. Uh, I'm not keen on opening up more spending. And consider things under $5 million, just paying cash. Start looking at paying cash, given the interest rates. Um, thank you. Anyone else? Public comment? Seeing none, remarks by, uh, remarks by Alderman. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> you seem to have done well with the criticism. <clears throat> Isn't it enlightening that it's the same people that come up and always criticize us? The thing is, we really do, and I know I do my homework and try to do our, our best with this. You know, and we can hear the cackle, you know, if I did something like that, they'd be running around like a chicken with its head cut off. But the you, thing you is... Nasty sneers. Excuse me. Uh, no, listen, the peanut gallery can sit down on this one. You had your no chance problem. to speak. The peanut gallery too. Okay? I, it's my turn to speak. Listen, I've earned my time in city government. 
I was a state rep for 18 years. I was a firefighter for the Nashville 40 years. I don't know what you done, but I know what I did and try to make this city grow. But the thing is, compliment to you. And it's just unfortunate that we try to make the best decisions that we possibly can. And for doing that, we get nailed to our proverbial crosses. It's not right. It really isn't right. Ladies should behave like ladies and gentlemen as gentlemen. That's the way I was brought up. If you can't say anything good about somebody, you don't say nothing at all. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you. Alderman O'Brien, motion. Thank you. I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion on the floor is to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 8.25 p.m. Yeah.